So while you were getting all this additional information about the audience, you were also doing work internally, training staff around audiences. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes, one of the things that I learnt uh, reading through some of the background information, particularly um, uh, around a project called Not For The Likes Of You, which I think Arts Council had funded with a couple of other, other organisations two or three years before that, was that uh, audience development had to be a kind of whole organisation thing if it was going to work. It had to be something that was owned at high levels of the organisation in terms of its management, and although a marketing function might drive it, it was something that couldn't just be left to them. There had to be kind of whole organisation buy-in, otherwise you probably weren't going to make progress with this. And in terms of the organisations that were coming in, uh, very few of them really had a marketing function or much experience of marketing. With an organisation like CMN, the Contemporary Music Network, used marketing, but in an outsourced way. It wasn't actually internalised. And most of the other organisations were simply too small or relied upon very empirical uh, understandings of their audience to really have much conception of audience development. So it seemed important to work with at least some of the team that might come into sound and music to develop an understanding of what audience development and marketing was. And I included myself in that. I mean, I was part of this journey in a sense. I was not in any sense pretending to have any knowledge greater than that I, than I had. Um, so we approached this in two ways. One was that I established a working group from within the staffs of the organisations that were involved in that point to discuss this issue, to look at some of the key um, literature that was around on this area, and then go out and do consultations with some organisations that we felt might be doing audience development well or that we could learn from. So the kind of thing we did there was to uh, read and discuss um, the report I mentioned before. We also looked at um, Charles Ledbetter's 10 Challenges for Arts Organisations, which had a lot of very helpful and indicative remarks about audience in it, particularly the way that the audience was changing and developing and how important it was for arts organisations to move with that also looking at John Nell's very interesting viewpoint on the participative audience and the new demands audiences might be making to actually become part of the picture, a player within the programme rather than simply a passive participant of what was put on. So that was uh, one way um, to approach it. At the same time, I involved that group and also such senior management as were prepared to take part in some workshops with Audiences London to look at the philosophy of audience development and try to develop some tools which might be useful in terms of marketing going forward. Um, so, for example, we looked at ladders of engagement and how those might be put forward. We started to think about how we might do some kind of segmentation for our audience based on the research that we'd done. We started to look at things like um, an ANSOF matrix, looking at uh, in which kind of quadrants of that particular matrix our work sat and where things might be in terms of the organisation um, taking its work forward. Because we had a particular challenge there, we had a lot of established lines of programming that were in one particular area, but we might, we might want to look at entirely new audiences and diversify our work. So where should the balance lie within that for the organisation not to try and do too much that was new and retain its existing audience? Because one of the learnings we'd had out of the first phase of work with Audiences London was you know, the importance of holding on to your core audience while at the same time developing new ones. Those music professionals and their needs were important for us as well as the other people we were starting to come into contact with. So that was the kind of that phase of work and out of that we uh, put together some thought, thoughts still relatively conjectural at that stage but which formed part of the business plan which eventually led to the establishment of Sound of Music.